Hi guys, Korean Movie Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recommend a 2021 Korean fantasy drama series, called Hellbound. This series tells the story of a society where people are killed by otherworldly beasts after being sentenced to death by prophet angels. However, the story won't revolve around how the people get together to defeat the beasts, but will focus more on the society's development around the novel incident instead, as a new religious group named New Truth shows up. In just 24 hours after its release on November 23, the series had become the most watched show in Netflix, even beating another popular South Korean show, Squid Game. So, in what ways will New Truth influence society? What's more in store for us? Let's find out. In Seoul, there are rumors about otherworldly beasts that kill sinners after getting the death decree from Prophet Angel. One day, a man is so nervous to death after getting the prophecy and anxiously waits for the designated time in a cafe. Finally, the time arrives and loud thumping is heard from the distance. The beasts suddenly break in and beat the man up. He runs away to the streets, but the beasts chase after him. After some time, the beasts catch up and toss the man several times. As he is crawling with all of his remaining strength, the beasts bite him in the neck and claw him until he bleeds badly. Then, they scorch him to death with supernatural powers from their palm, until only ashes remain. The beasts then run towards a portal and vanish after getting their objective done. After the incident, the police investigate the case and put it under murder category. A detective named Kyung Hoon is tasked to find out about New Truth, the religious group who have spread the rumors even before the incident happened. Then, Kyung Hoon and his assistant arrive at the scene. The forensics team can find traces of the victim's beating, but cannot get anything on the beasts. They continue their investigation by joining the New Truth gathering. Chairman Jung, the New Truth leader, is giving a preach on why the people should atone for their sins and believe in God's words. He also shows multiple recorded incidents as video evidence of his teachings. He reveals that the recorded victims have sinned gravely, starting from fraud, arson, children exploitation, to rape, and even murder. He says that the incidents are demonstrations of hell on earth, ordered by God to remind the humans of the consequences of sin. After the session, the detectives confront him to ask more. He laughs at the idea of investigating the murder done by the police. Suddenly, Kyung Hoon sees his daughter as the group's volunteer and chases after her. After ordering her to get home, Kyung Hoon who isn't happy with the act, confronts Jung. Jung manages to talk his way out of it and they continue the questioning. He reveals that he used to live in a Catholic orphanage until the age of 20. When he was leaving for Tibet to secretly end his miserable life, he witnessed the demonstration and his life changed ever since. Ten years later, he decided to spread the new teachings and establish the new truth. As Jung is expressing his teachings, Kyung Hoon chuckles and expresses his disbelief. However, he is rendered silent after Jung brings up Kyung Hoon's wife's murder case and points out the injustice in the human law system. After the meeting, Kyung Hoon gets home and talks to his daughter. After some explanation and consideration, Kyung Hoon reluctantly decides to let his daughter join the cult. Then, he looks into Jung from the internet. However, he remembers Jung's words regarding his wife, and is reminded of how painful the incident was. In addition, the culprit was released after six years imprisonment after the court ruled that the culprit was under drug influence. Meanwhile, a single mother of two children named Park is closing up her stall and gets home. At home, she is surprised by her children and they celebrate her birthday. Suddenly, the prophet angel appears before them and the decree says that she will die in five days at 3 p.m. and is bound for hell. Meanwhile, the radical members of the New Truth have formed an organization called Arrowhead. A member of Arrowhead is doing a live streaming to talk about the first demonstration in Seoul. He condemns the non-believers and points out that the police should look into the victim's record instead to find his sin. He then condemns a novelist who outrightly speaks out his disbelief. Turns out, the Arrowhead members have captured the novelists and beat him, to make him take back his words. They repeatedly beat him up and order him to ask for God's forgiveness. Furthermore, the Arrowhead sees themselves as heroes who lead the novelist back to the right path. The next day, the police are swarmed by calls from the public, asking about the victim's crime record. 
they also have captured the members who beat the novelist, but they are all minors and refuse to testify. In addition, they are not afraid of the law and firmly believe that they are saviors in the new world. In the office, the novelist is also present with his lawyer, Eugene. Eugene is known as a lawyer who handles cases of the new truth victims. Eugene points out that the Arrowhead will do something much worse in the future, as their belief gets stronger. Meanwhile, the second victim, Park, has visited Eugene's law firm to ask for counsel. Turns out, Park has talked about the decree with the new truth, and they offer her 3 billion won to let them live broadcast the demonstration. As the money is important for her two children after she dies, she comes to ask Eugene's counsel to make sure her children receive the money safely. After some discussion and consideration, Eugene agrees to take the case, to help her and the children. The next day, the forensics report of the first victim shows up. However, it doesn't help at all as the data shows that the victim's burned body is no longer an organic matter and doesn't exist in this world. The condition frustrates the police as they can't handle the case properly and keeps on getting threats from the Arrowhead members. Meanwhile, Eugene contacts Kyung Hoon to ask for his help in handling Park's case. And so, the two meet Jung in Park's house, to determine the terms on the 3 billion won deal. The New Truth agrees not to disclose Park and her children's identity until the live broadcast. They agree to any terms as long as Park will be there when the demonstration happens. After transferring the money, Jung looks at the photos and asks about the children's father. Park reluctantly answers that they are from different fathers and she has raised them alone. June keeps on digging into her past, looking for her sin. Suddenly, her son who has been eavesdropping from his room gets out and gets mad at Jung. However, Park nags him and drags him to his room. She shouts at him and loses her composure. With teary eyes, she says that the demonstration is a great opportunity for her to provide for her kids. She also begs for Hyejin to find a safe place for her children. Then, Park's live broadcast arrangement reaches the arrowhead which excites them. However, the new truth doesn't spill Park's identity as the agreement obliges. Turns out, Kyung Hoon's assistant is also a member of the arrowhead and he reveals Park's and her children's identity in the live chat. In addition, he also reveals Park's sin which crazes the arrowhead members. The live streamer continues to make false accusations on Park. He speculates that Park has beaten the kids, and even killed the children's fathers for insurance money. The live streaming is watched by many people in Korea. At night, Kyung Hoon comes home but can't find his daughter. He calls her and she lies that she is at her friend's house to study together. In fact, she is at Jung's house. She confesses to Jung, saying that her mother's death was her fault due to her carelessness. She still blames herself for six years until now. Jung hugs her and reassures her that they are going to change the world today. Turns out, they are going to kill the murderer who has killed her mother. Jung keeps on whispering into the girl's ears to convince her further, as they are observing the murderer. With heavy breath, the girl sneaks behind the murderer's back and tarses him. Then, they bring him to an old factory. When the murderer is about to wake up, Jung drugs him to knock him unconscious. He smiles as the murderer tries to fight back. After the murderer is knocked out, the girl pushes him into the chamber and Jung turns the fire on. Finally, Kyung Hoon's daughter smiles as she has taken her revenge on her mother's murderer. Meanwhile, Kyung Hoon is notified by Hye Jin about Park's identity revelation. Hye Jin hastily speeds up the agenda and picks Park's children to fly them to Canada, so that they can get a safe place with her cousin there. Kyung Hoon immediately goes to the airport to meet Hyejin and calls his assistant to guard Park's house. Hyejin arrives at Park's house and they immediately leave for the airport. Park and her children cover their faces to avoid the public scrutiny. Luckily, they are able to get to the airport safely. Hyejin immediately grabs the children and hands them over to an attendant to get them board the airplane safely. After some time, they are able to get to the airplane and fly to Canada. The boy cries as he realizes that they might not be able to see their mother anymore. Outside, Kyung Hoon joins Park and Hye Jin. They are relieved to know that the airplane has taken off. Park regrets her last moments with her children, as she was scolding them yesterday. The next day, the murderer's burned body is found near the factory's area and is covered by the reporters. 
Turns out, Jung has been planning to use the murderer as a fake demonstration testimony. In the office, the police chief shows the news to Kyung Hoon. The chief states that they need to catch the culprits immediately before the reports put the public in panic. Meanwhile, the Arrowhead member live streams the news once more. They condemn the law which has set the murderer free and firmly believes that his death was God's work. He also begs for Park to confess to her sins before tomorrow's public demonstration. At the same time, the believers have crowded Park's house and demand her repentance. Inside, the new truth is setting up the place to get ready for tomorrow's show. On the other hand, Park is reminiscing her joyful memory with the children. Suddenly, the crowds get crazy as the TV stations announce that they are going to air the demonstration live tomorrow. In the office, Kyung Hoon is looking into the murderer's case. Suddenly, the Arrowhead mob breaks in and wreaks havoc in there. They demand the police to stop to investigate the demonstrations and release their captive members. Finally, the fateful live demonstration day arrives. Front row seats are accommodated, meant for new truth VIPs who want to watch the demonstration. The area is heavily crowded by the masses from the public and TV networks. The police and the SWAT team are also present to secure the place. Then, the VIPs arrive, making the lawyers wonder how big the new truth is. Park weakly enters the room and sits on her fateful chair. The members then escort everyone out and leave Park alone in the room. Then, they sound the alarm to start the countdown. All of the people impatiently wait for the countdown to zero, to see what happens. Suddenly, a loud thumping is heard from the distance, indicating that the beasts are here. Now that we've known the story of episode 1 and 2, we are left to wonder about the rest of the episodes. What's your take on the series? Does it simply encourage us to repent for our sins, or is it much bigger than that? Knowing that the series is from South Korea, it is unlikely to end there. Furthermore, the existence of the new truth and the arrowhead will complicate things further as they keep on influencing the public. Firstly, they justify their violence behind the new religion. Then, they publicly broadcast Park's execution and even reveal her sins to justify their actions. They laugh on top of other people's misfortune and see themselves as saviors of the new world. Despite their actions, the public starts to join them as well, due to the existence of the beasts and prophet angel. The people's belief will break and they will justify the violence under the pressure, just like in the Squid Game series. In Squid Game, the players break due to the fear of losing the game and being executed. Meanwhile in the Hellbound series, people change their belief due to the new occurrences of the angel and beasts. Now the question is, will Jung feel the same remorse just like gi -hoon after committing those sins? Will the Arrowhead members turn and regain their pure humanity? How will society develop with the superstitions coming true and radical movements happening? There might be two possible scenarios for this question. 1. The public will get fed up with their radicality and expel them. Or, the new truth and arrowhead will keep on expanding and imposing their new laws on the public, just like how the churches reigned over Europe back in the Middle Ages. Since we have four more episodes to cover, we can find out the answer to this question by watching the full series on Netflix or other streaming platforms. Or, you can request the next recap parts in the comments, and make sure to subscribe and like this video to help the channel out. We'll continue the next recap if we get 10,000 likes in this video. Hopefully, the big number will make you impatient enough to wait as we are encouraging you to watch the full masterpiece. So, subscribe to Netflix and take 4 hours to watch the rest of the series on your own. Thank you for watching, and hopefully we can see you in other videos.